sounds, the different sounds. Like this is, these are the vana. I mean, these are from one of the sea urchin things, and I, I, they make sounds because of this. And these are gourds, of course, gourds, and like that. And this is a kashishi. The kashishi. I wish I could play it like Carlinos, but this is how it was. And this is a tiny rain stick. And I use pieces of gourd in here to be the baffles. This is a double one. This is a rain stick, and I always wondered how rain sticks really work. So I made this out of plexiglass. And those are again the seeds. What I'm dropping in are plexiglass pellets, and this is what they use. They melt when they make plexiglass. And every cylinder sounds a little bit different. I guess um, just thinking about it, you know, I, I, I think I started because of my mom having to keep me busy. So I learned to do the embroidery and the knitting and the sewing and all of that. I found that I could sew more clothes than buy. <laughs> so if I wanted more clothes, then I had to sew it. I sewed all of my clothes up through college. I graduated from the University of Hawaii and I have a degree in um, education. And I was in um, elementary education. And I found that I just couldn't stand it. I mean, I couldn't stand taking all these methods classes of how to teach. I decided I wanted to get out. And the easiest way to get out was to become a, an art education major because then you only had to take one of those classes. I did ceramics with Claude Horan and for a couple of semesters. And then at the same time, because I was in um, education, I had to take other art classes, so I took weaving. And that's when I really felt like I really liked it, you know. I mean, it was cleaner. <laughs> I didn't have to just wash up afterwards. I could just stand up and dust off. But I really find that weaving for me is not the most creative. I, I enjoy it very much, but it's not really creative it, for me. But when it came to learning to make baskets, I learned to make baskets because of the hand weavers hui. And I wanted to make money for the hui, so we hired a basket teacher. And the deal was that they would give me a basket to sell at the sale. So, you know, it was make money for us too. So that's how I started to make baskets. And as I made baskets, I realized how much I liked it because I'm a control freak. I mean, and when you make baskets, you're in control of everything. From start to finish, you're in control. You have the materials, and if you can control the materials, you can make anything you want. Teaching basketry was very rewarding because it, it gave people a sense of accomplishment, and it really made them feel like they had success in their hands. And I really think that's important for people. And so I guess teaching is really a thing that I like. And I, I taught basket weaving at the museum for about 20 years. And I also taught in schools. I went to school and did artists in the school. And then I was asked by Val Ching to teach at the University Lab School for teachers. So I taught there for 13 summers. And I only taught teachers and they got DOE credits for my class. And they, they said I taught a really tough class. And we gave it to them. <laughs> but, but they made baskets. Actually, though, I never really taught as a regular school teacher because I got married right after and we moved to the mainland. So we lived in South Carolina where they had this one-room school houses that you taught everything and I was not fit to do that. So while we were there, I didn't teach. I just, you know, I... I think I did ceramics. And then um, we moved to Okinawa. And again, I didn't teach there because, you know, it was on, we lived on the economy. And then when I came back, I had my, my two boys and I didn't teach, I just was a full-time mom. And, you know, during those times, I just made things. When they had to have um, 
a helmet for it to be a Greek warrior. I, I made that. I made a castle out of sugar cubes and <laughs> all that kind of fun things. So yeah, I think, I think teaching my dad to weave was one of the best teaching that I did, with weaving anyway. Oh, my dad was, you know, he was such a gregarious person at times, and people always thought that he was, but he was actually kind of shy. <laughs> and I wonder, because they say even Johnny Carson, you know, he's a very shy and quiet person. So one day I just asked him, hey, you know, I had this friend with a, a kind of a smaller loom, and how about I you teach you to weave, you know, because I, I, I wove a, a, um, a rag rug, and, and I said, Dad, why don't you do this, you know, I, I do it, try. And, and he started to like it. He's very, also very meticulous. So he started weaving rugs, and, and then he was very proud about people asking him for one, and he'd be proud and giving them away and all that although my mom was doing the grunt labor. He was just weaving and <laughs> taking the credit. <laughs> the things in my resume that are the most exciting is the fact that I was in the book, 500 Baskets, and these two helmets right here are in the book. And I guess I am one of the fewer people that have more than one piece in the book, and it was an international competition for just 500 baskets, and there were loads of, you know, entries, so I'm happy with that. One of my little helmets got into a show in, you know, a competition from Houston, so it's been fun. At the museum, which was Linikona, they lost their Shibori teacher, and Vince knew that I had taught, you know, I, I did it, and so he said, hey, come teach and I've been teaching it ever since. And I really love it. I love it because uh, there are so many possibilities. And you can do the traditional thing by sewing. Then you can also do the fun things like tying things in and using a slinky or using little pieces of wood or using um, tennis balls. It's really very creative. You can have three people doing the same thing but it always looks different and it usually looks nice. And it's magic. It's like having magic in your own hands. And so I think of all the things I do, it's the most magical and the most fun. And I decided to make quilts for my sons. It's a sample of all the different kinds of techniques that I like to use. Many of the techniques, not all, but many of them. And I guess as I've been doing this, I've come back to liking to stitch a lot. So. That's what this, this quilt has a lot of stitching on it. And when I showed that, it was not for sale, but the state bought it somehow. They, you know, and so I said, well, if the state's gonna buy it, well, that's kind of an honor. So I sold the quilt and then I had to make another quilt for my son. Indigo has become a large part of my life and the things I like to do. I did jellyfishes for a long time. And I was part of a show that showed the jellyfishes before. I was an invited artist. That was my grandson and I going to the aquarium and watching the jellyfishes. And if you've gone to the aquarium and watched them, they are graceful and they're beautiful. And it's just amazing how many different kinds there are. And so that, that kind of set me off and, you know, a basket. Mm, jellyfish, I guess they're upside down baskets, you know. I got into making it with things that glowed in the dark. My son Brian helped me buy things, and he sent for thread that glows in the dark and string that glows in the dark. And then I went down to the fishing supply store and found all kinds of stuff. You even have tubing that glows in the dark. It, it just kind of took off. It's just kind of whimsical. I guess that's what it is, very whimsical and fun. On another level, I started to read about jellyfishes. Our ocean getting warmer and changing. Jellyfishes have become very plentiful. There are some that grow a meter or two meters in diameter, and there are some tiny, tiny little ones that, that are so toxic that just a little brush against a person can be incredibly painful or even kill someone. What I thought was fun and happy turned out to be kind of scary. 
I became intrigued with anemones because I guess I saw someone, something that someone had done. So I started making them, but I did not want to weave. I did not want to crochet. I just wanted to make it a different way. If I put it on wire, it would be kind of neat, as opposed to a thread. And that's how it started. So I started making these things with my beads. And when I started making them, I thought I'd use up all the stuff I had, except my friends keep giving it to me. So now I have more and more. So that's fruitless. <laughs> I'm a very lucky person because I've never had to support myself by making the art. And I'm truly blessed. So I can just do stuff and you can, I could just make stuff. And like my older son does really wonderful things too. Someone asked him about that, you know, how come you do all these different things? And he said, oh, my mom. My mom would always be making stuff and she looked like she was so happy doing it. So I thought, you know, making stuff is good. And I think that's what I do, I make stuff. <laughs>